لله تعالى إيمانا واحتسابا لوجه الله الكريم عز وجل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We continue our theme, دروس الحياة من قصص الأنبياء في كتاب الله Life lessons from the stories of prophets in the book of Allah The Quran has a surah, surah 31, chapter 31 titled Luqman and Luqman a man who probably lived at the time of Dawood and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is reported to have said regarding this man according to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu who said that the Rasul said لم يكن Luqman نبيا ولكن كان عبدا كثير الفكر حسن اليقين حسن الظن كثير الصمت أحب الله تعالى فأحبه فمن عليه بالحكمة أو كما قال صدقت يا رسول الله The Prophet is reported to have said that Luqman was not a prophet but he was a worshiper of Allah conscientious, deep thinking positive in attitude silent very often who loved Allah and Allah loved him so Allah granted him, Allah granted him depth of wisdom Now we can read lesson from the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documents as part of his divine revelation advice or nasiha which Luqman gave to his son and this is captured in the surah to Luqman chapter 31 as I have mentioned now we are going to focus only on the nasiha very briefly and each point is a lesson in itself for all of us but it is absolutely relevant to note and most beautiful that Luqman alayhi salam begins his advice by saying Ya Bunay in other words when he's speaking to his son he says oh my beloved son oh my young boy a term of endearment the same term we found earlier on used by Ibrahim to his son Ismail and used by Yaqub alayhi salam for his son Yusuf alayhi salam in other words Allah wants to highlight that it is one thing for a parent or for a father to teach a son but another to show love before even teaching him beginning with that endearing term follows nine particular points first point Luqman salam advises his son regarding Tawheed that Tawheed is the foundation of Islam upon which all other teachings and all other practices of Islam depend and lean on point number three is also about the omnipotence and the omniscience of Allah Allah's all-powerful nature and the fact that he has knowledge over everything point number two immediately after and it flows in the Quran like that وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا immediately after the command to obey Allah comes the command to respect parents. So the second point immediately after the one of Tawheed and in between Tawheed and speaking about the omniscience of Allah comes the advice, respect for parents. Because we come into the world through the agency of parents. They are our nurturers, our caretakers, our protectors, our sponsors and our supporters. The fourth one is to establish worship. Because Ibadah, Salah, prayer is a manifestation of obedience to Allah and it is a submission in practice and it is an expression of one's faith. The fifth point is enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. Because evil and wrongdoing is a spiritual, a moral and a social concern. It's a violation of human goodwill. It is an affront to human dignity of course must be avoided at all cost the sixth point is the exercising of patient perseverance life is a test and test requires our awareness that we'll go through challenges and challenges require patient perseverance and patience is not only a virtue in Islam it's an obligatory virtue seek help of Allah through patient perseverance and prayer 
Look at how Allah links the emotional capacity for patient perseverance and that with prayer, which is one of the highest forms of worship and one of the pillars of Islam. So patience is an obligatory virtue and it is intimately tied to the practice of our faith. For example, at the end of Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, usbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu, wa attaqullaha la'allakum tuflihun. And numerous ayat in the Quran. Oh, you who believe, be patient. Mutually manifest patience. In other words, try to assist and encourage one another to be able to facilitate patience among yourselves and strengthen yourselves by mutual bond. So the notion of patient perseverance as integral to our lives and as an obligatory virtue. Number seven, the avoidance of arrogance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have prayed, hadith, document al-bazari, al-bazar, documents the hadith, Allahumma ja'alni shakura, wa ja'alni sabura, wa ja'al fi aini saghira, wa fi a'yuni nasi kabira. Oh Allah, let me be grateful to you, let me be patient in my tribulations, let me be small in my own eyes, and high in the estimation of others. Number eight, to be moderate in social engagement. When you engage people, we are social beings. How we engage one another is very significant. It's a reflection of our character. So, be moderate in social engagement, moderation and humility, whether in our talking, in our demeanor, in our walking. وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُقْتَالًا فَخُورًا He says, and turn not thy cheek away from people in pride, nor walk with rudeness through the earth. Verily, Allah does not like any arrogant boaster. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also advised, مَنْ تَوَاضَعَ لِلَّهِ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Whosoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah will elevate him. And the ninth point, to be careful how we communicate and how we use our words and how we convey what we convey. Words have meaning and can have incredible power. It has the power to inform or to misinform, to persuade or dissuade. It can hurt, it can heal. So consider careful what you say and why you say what you say and how you say it. That's why in another verse, which we often read in the khutbah, before the person says, Qabil to nikaha in marriage, he says, we read the nasiha, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida. Oh, you believe, say words that are straight. Before you say, I accept the person in marriage, qulu qawlan sadida. If your words are straight, yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. Your actions will come right and Allah will forgive you your sins. So, there is tremendous depth of wisdom and great ethical value in these nine points of advice from Luqman. Advice that are timeless. Advice that may be communicated from father to son, from parent to child, from family to family, and through the ages to members of society. And I hope I've done that here by giving the small talk to you, inshallah. May Allah make us walk in the footsteps of the prophets and learn from the wisdom of the wise. Just by the way, in a humorous note, but it's true, they asked Luqman al-Hakim, how did you become wise? He said, I observed the foolishness of the foolish and I avoided their foolishness. And Isa alayhi salam said, Allah gave me power to bring the dead back to life, but he never gave me the power to remove the foolishness from foolish people. So may we be of those who are wise and take wisdom insha Allah. Wa may you tell Hikma, Fakad Utiya Khairan Kathira, Akulu Kolihada, Wa Astaghfirullah, Wa Salamu Alaikum.